peace and blessings. This is Nubia I, the raw food goddess, the womb priestess and holistic practitioner. All right, y'all. So I am on a dry fast. I'm still doing the one day on eating, one day off not eating. And I don't know, really know how long it's going to last. I've lost a lot of weight. I have not weighed myself. Uh, sometimes I think a little too much and sometimes I say, hey, it's great. You know, it's interesting. I, I don't know when I'm going to stop because I know at some point I want to eat daily and just stop eating after a certain hour, maybe after 2 or 3 p.m. But at this point, this seems to be working for me. And today I feel a little more hungrier than usual. Um, yesterday I ate and I had some couscous. And as you all know, I used to have this fabulous kale couscous salad on my YouTube channel and I took it off because I know that couscous has gluten, even though mine says organic, but I don't think that matters. And a gluten gives a lot of people um, uh, sensitivities. A lot of people are very sensitive to gluten. And I started noticing that when I ate it, I, and I ate a lot of it, I would get like bloated stomach, my skin would puff up, my eyes would get bad in my eyes, which means that the liver and kidneys is working hard to digest. And so I, I stopped, totally. Well, I had this little bit left in the house that I bought for my daughter maybe months ago. And I was craving it last night. And so I made it. And what I found today was I got the puffy eyes and the puffy face. So I'm definitely feeling a little more, maybe not even hungry, just a little more tired and drawn. I got eight hours full sleep. But I know that it's probably the couscous. And it was like this little bit left. And I ate it. And it was good while I ate it. But I won't do it again. So uh, still 100% raw. Still doing my thing. And that feels really good. I wanted to remind you all on the YouTube channel. I want to make sure I got the right date. So you know that the third Wednesday of every month until the end of 2014, December 2014, I'm doing free conference calls for all, for anybody that's watching, whether you're a subscriber or not subscribed, you know, viewers, there's a call-in number. Would love for you all to be a part of it. So the next one is actually Wednesday, April 16th. So it's next week. Wow, so that's so cool. It's next week. It's going to be from 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So for all my people on the West Coast, that's going to be 5 to 6 p.m., okay, if you're on the uh, uh, West Coast. But if you're on the East Coast, 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And what we're going to talk about, which is really cool to me, is getting out in nature. Because in my private coaching group, Women Who Run With The Womb, we are actually in, the, I think, the fifth series, and it's getting out in nature. So it's not too late to join the group. Come in where you fit in. We're gonna our, our next uh, about six months are gonna be about getting out in nature. So you want to be a holistic practitioner. So you want to have your own business. These are some of the series we're going through. Sacred movement, movement. It's just amazing. That group is amazing, and I love it. So I just want to say that. Um, I want to thank everybody who's been watching the videos of me and, and with D Health Store, Brother Tootie Matra in LA, and the sister Monisha Gardner. She is a colonic therapist or colon therapist. And we, I had so much fun. It was so great. It was a wonderful vacation. So, myself, uh, which is Nubia I, uh, Tootie Matra, and Lennon Honor, we will be traveling. We will be going to New York in August. And London, or for all my London, England sisters, I'm coming with the two brothers. We are calling ourselves three the hard way. <laughs> and we are going to do um, some stuff. So I'm sure in New York, I don't know what if we're going to do some of the surrounding areas. But if you are in the tri-state area, please come out. And if you're outside the tri-state area of New York, come out anyway. Because I want to meet you. I had so much fun meeting my sisters in Los Angeles. It was amazing. We had so much fun. We kicked it so hard. So, um, yeah, so anyway, I want us all to do that. And uh, London, I'll give you the exact dates on New York and London. Because I'm figuring we'll probably do London in August as well, but I can't say for sure. But I do know New York is for sure in August. Uh, so I'm really excited about that. I'm going to be doing a wonderful collaboration. I'm also going to Brazil in August as well. This is not a speaking engagement. This is for pure pleasure. But I'm going to work with a sister and we're going to uh, talk about doing a holistic retreat with myself and her. 
uh, in Brazil, where we are bringing people to Brazil, you are bringing yourself. We are going to do a raw foods, colon therapy, massage therapy, beautiful, wonderful raw food style. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about raw foods, and especially raw foods in the black community, or raw foods in the African American community, the Caribbean community, the African community, people of color, black people specifically in raw foods. And it's a reason why I'm going to talk about it. It's interesting. In 2009, the first video I ever did was raw food and people of color. And I was so funny that that was the first video. I had like this external webcam. I'm looking all down. I didn't even know how to look in the camera. I never forget it. It was just, it was just basic, but it came from my heart. And so I want to do that again. I was thinking about uh, a lot of us. I know that's into raw foods. You might be uh, subscribe to Fully Raw Christina or Megan Elizabeth or Paul Neeson or Tony Sebastian or whoever you're subscribed to and most of them are probably not looking like you and I'm not I don't have anything against people bringing information that is good but what I would like to see for us is a real revolution what I would like to be known as the premier raw foodist advisor to our people, to people of African descent and anybody else that's feeling it. But the reason why I think it's so important is I notice like a lot of times the uh, and other communities in the raw food community, they will start naming, you know, raw food people. I really hear them name um, uh, uh, Karen Calabrese. I really hear them name uh, Annette Larkins or Aris Latam or Storm Tarafero. Or, I mean, there are black raw foodists that have been raw foodists forever. And what I want to do is put it on the map. That's why I'm doing this raw intensive. I want to show you, me, and everybody else that we could be raw foodists. And we could thrive. And we could prosper as raw foodists. You know, we need to put our hat in the, in, the, in the mix, if you will, and let people know that we are raw, we are beautiful, we are proud, we still love ourselves. We can be Afrocentric or, you know, loving yourself and your culture and be a raw foodist. It's not an oxymoron. It really can be something that is beautiful. And this is not against anybody else that's doing it that's not black. What I'm saying to you is we have specific needs. We have a legacy that we're coming from, not just the standard American diet in itself. No, not just that. We're coming from a, a slave American diet as well. And so we're so used to eating the foods that was left to us, thrown to us, you know, rationed to us. And we turned it, as amazing as we are as people of African descent, we turned it into something that is absolutely amazing and beautiful as far as creativity. But it's killing us. And so what I want to do is, the reason why I'm doing this raw intensive is, I want to be able to take you from cook to raw foods, but taking into account our legacy. Taking into account our taste buds. Taking into account the foods that we're so used to and understanding culturally what it means for us to eat certain foods. Think about culture. If you're from the Caribbean culture, there's a lot of goat meat or cow hill soup or different things that are part of your culture. African American culture, a lot of times it's fried chicken, barbecue chicken, barbecue, anything. We love some barbecue. And there's reasons for that. And how do we get away from that? How do we transition into raw foods and still have that taste until eventually we start loving foods as they are, not even gourmet anymore? You know, we got the, the Latin American community and the foods that we like in our Latin American community. I mean, I'm from New York. I used to go to Puerto Rican restaurants. My God, I used to eat pork and it was so good and the rice and the beans and oh my gosh. You know, so I get this. I know what it is for us. It's different. We have a different connection with food. And a lot of times, some of us growing up poor like myself, we didn't even have a lot of food. So once we started making it our own, got out the house, got out our situation, moved away from home, got the jobs, the so-called good jobs, or maybe the bad jobs, but got the jobs, we said we're going to eat like everybody else. And now we have the diseases like everybody else. You know, I remember a time when the black people didn't get cancer as, as 
you know, much as we get it now. I remember that. I mean, you all may not, but I do. Diabetes, not as much as we're getting now. So what's going on? I mean, I know a lot of it is. And also, I want to talk to the fast food generation. I want them to join the raw food intensive. So I'm just saying that I'm loving y'all. I want our celebrities. I want our Alice Walkers and even Yolanda, Yolanda Van Zandt and Oprah Winfrey and other ones to really be able to have a place. That's why I want to do this retreat where they as celebrities, and, and I know celebrities enjoy their privacy, they deserve it, can come and be uh, uh, in a group of people that share common goals and culture and able to heal on raw foods. And I want to be that woman that brings it to them. I was thinking about Dr. Ben, Dr. Henry Clark, uh, Ivan Van Sermon, all these people that, and I know definitely Dr., uh, Dr. Clark, I mean, the diet that we, they were on, could you imagine had they been eating the right foods and having somebody there to provide raw food chefs, to provide the food for them so they can continue to give the knowledge and the wisdom and they gave so much and we are so thankful. But imagine if our scholars were able to eat the right foods. I would love, we got some new scholars, I would love to bring uh, raw foods into their lives and really, um, you know, I, I am, I'm going to, I'm going to do a, one day I'm going to do a raw food intensive just for our black scholars and people that are keepers of the knowledge. I think the new revolution is not just the information, not that's just the African pride that we must have in ourselves to, to be productive citizens, but also the foods that we eat. They must be of its highest. I've been doing this for a long time and it makes a difference. And so, yeah, I mean, I, I wanna see uh, a raw food channel or my raw food channel reach 96, 100,000 viewers, just like the black hair channels do. Because if we don't put the right foods in our bodies, we might as well forget about hair and everything else. We won't be here long enough to enjoy our hair or our bodies. So, I mean, it's so important. If we don't look at our diet as the number one thing to keep us going, to thriving, to our longevity, what are we looking at? And I want us to recognize that there is a woman, Nubia I, who loves you all so much, and she wants to bring that to you. And anybody else that's watching that's not African American, you're a person of color, you feel me. You know that there's Korean cuisine or Vietnamese cuisine or all these things that may be difficult for us to come away from. But, where you, but, but a lot of times in this Asian culture, there is an emphasis on lots of vegetables. I know in African American culture and Caribbean culture, vegetables are mostly root vegetables. And a lot of them, the, the green stuff comes out the can. We can't keep living like that. We have to change. That's why I'm doing this raw for intensive. Y'all don't even know. Y'all don't even know what I've been doing and how much I've been meditating and all this dry fasting. It's bringing up a lot. We can't keep getting diabetes. We can't keep getting high blood pressure. We have to stop. We really have to stop. And I know that we can. So I know that I did an interview and, uh, with the sister Monisha Garner out of Torrance, California. We were talking about colonics and I do understand, somebody wrote, it was beautiful, it was wonderful, I love the comment, it stayed, but they talked about their experience with colonics wasn't good. And I can understand that. Let me explain to you, to me a little bit about, to you a little bit about what I understand about colonics. I think that most of us need a series. Because after the first one, you can become constipated, bloated, can't, you know, move your bowels for a while. I think that the job may not necessarily be able to be done in one session, particularly if you're coming from the standard American black diet, and you're probably going to have some difficulties. And I think a series would be good. But I do think there's a point where we'll get our bodies so healthy, particularly doing a raw food lifestyle diet, that we won't even need the colonics anymore. But I think they may be good to jumpstart it ourselves. So do your research. Find out for yourself. See how it works. Colonics are more than just physical. What I found for me was I was not releasing. I would allow myself to release after the water was, you know, inserted and the water was pushed up, up way up into the colon and then I was, I was supposed to release. I was unable to release a lot and it had nothing to do with my body not functioning properly. 
It had everything to do with the metaphor of what am I holding on to from the past that is preventing me from getting what I want. And I am a raw foodist. So what was these things? I mean, I think relatively my colonic was easy. I saw a lot of undigested food, so I'm learning to chew my food more properly. But it, it, it was great. It was clear. It was easy. I'm probably not as toxic, but I'm, I'm sure I got toxicities. I live in the city. I live among, you know, ride behind trucks and, and, and pollution. But what I'm saying was, what I was able to experience on the table was flashes of of, of relationships that came up for me that I was holding either anger or fear around and they came up on that table and I was able to release them when I had a bowel movement after I got off the table. That's why you want to clean your body. You're holding on to things that are in the way. That's why you think, why can't I leave this job? Or why can't I get this promotion? Or why can't I really start this business that I keep talking about starting? Or why can't I really just lose this weight once for all or be healthy or leave this relationship or enter a good relationship? It's not your will, lack of willpower. It's your diet. It's what's coming in and going out. It's what we hold on to. So when you do raw foods, you're really letting go of more than just the negative foods. You're letting go of the feelings, the emotions that are attached to the foods that we eat. And if we have a cultural affinity to our food, if we are connected to our food and our, do our culture, then we're really holding on. And what can we let go? How can we, as people of African descent, start a new culture? Because I understand why we have the barbecues and we get together and we're around food. It's normal to socialize around food, to be with the people that you love. But you know afterwards, once the night go down, everybody drinking a while now, everybody want to fight or act up. Or if they don't have a fight, they go home, they got the itis, they want to go to sleep now. They aggravated, they got a hangover, even if it's a food hangover. We could live, we could have raw foods and throw down just like uh, in any culture and throw down with our cultural foods and be happy and healthy and looking good and losing weight. I was even thinking about this even acceptance of getting bigger. Even especially in our culture as black people or people of African descent, we think it's normal, oh, you know, I'm almost 50, girl. You know how it is, metabolism slowed down, and girl, everybody my size, everybody's fat, so it doesn't really matter. And what I'm telling you is the aging process is an illusion, and the standard American black diet is killing us, and it's aging us prematurely, and we don't have to go out like that. We don't have to go out like that that. People could say whatever. Somebody left this ugly, nasty comment on my, on my, one of my YouTubes. You know, said she was with me since 2009 and I'm not the same and I changed. I'm always talking about these classes. Classes are to learn. If you don't know, you have to get the information. Why wouldn't you want to get it from somebody that loves you, cares about you, and look like you? Do you really think I'm doing this for nothing or the money or whatever? Do you really think? I don't want to be the only black raw foodist. I want to be able to have our own raw food restaurants, not just one in a town, but many. I want to see other black holistic practitioners fully healthy, whole, and complete not just halfway, not just went to school, got the skills, but they jacked up. I don't want to be the jacked up holistic practitioner, and I don't want you to be that. I want a group of people that I can call and go see and hang out with, and we could be around food in a more healthy way. I am doing it for selfish reasons. I need camaraderie from people that look like me. So yes, I am being selfish. I need you to be healthy so that we can all be together and won't feel so isolated. Like we're so alone. That's why I'm establishing groups. She said, all she talks about is groups, groups, groups. Do you know why? 
Have we so lost it? We so disconnected from what works? We work well in groups. We need that support. We cannot do it alone, nor should we, nor should we have to. That's why I create groups. I didn't even know what this video was going to be about today. That's why I'm dry fasting. You think I'm dry fasting because I'm greedy? I'm dry. I don't eat all day, 36 hours, sometimes every other day without food and water. Why am I doing that? Because I want answers. I want the most high God, God is creator, spirit, divine one. I want to be able to hear Spirit, speak to me and tell me what I want to do. I love you like Malcolm X love you. I love you like Coretta Scott King love you. I love you like Martin Luther King love you. I love you. This is my revolution. This is how, what I'm doing for my people. This is what I was born to do. I, this is my tool. It's how do we love ourselves by staying healthy. How do we become respectable citizens so that everybody in the world could look at us and say, yeah, they are something to look after, meaning to look after being like. They are an example of excellence. That's what I want. That's what I want. I want that more than anything. I want us to have great pregnancies. I want us to stop having fibroid tumors, endometriosis, and bacterial vaginosis. I'm done with it. We got to stop being so silent as black people about what we're going through. Because if we start talking, at least privately in a group, we'll actually start realizing that other sisters is going through it too. What I love about my group, Women Who Run With The Womb, there's no judgment. It's just love. What I'm loving about what's going to happen in that raw food intensive, which, by the way, I have plenty of slots left. I'm excited. I'm excited. So join $97 a month. I'm changing the date. It's going to start on the, um, the uh, summer solstice. I'm sorry. Yeah, the summer solstice, June 21st. And I'll let you know more about that and why in the next video. So, yeah. So, my YouTubers, I want to just remind you that next week, uh, Wednesday, April 16th, uh, from 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we are doing the free conference call. It's going to be entitled Getting Out of Nature. It's more healing than you think. We are so disconnected from nature. That's why we're eating denatured foods. I get it now. I figured it out. We're not going to be afraid of the sun anymore. We're not going to be afraid to get dark anymore. We're not going to be afraid that our hair be nappy anymore. We're not going to do it. I'm not. I'm a holistic practitioner. It's always more than what I show you. I've always got more to any lesson. It's never just the food and physical. The food represents the mental, the spiritual, the metaphysical, the metaphorical, you name it. I love people. I love all people. I really do mean it. I am so, I, I just love folks and I love being out with them. But our people, we are special and we have special needs. And I mean that in the best way. I didn't say better than anybody else. I said we are special and we have special needs. If you're going on 30 and 40 and 50 and you dragging, most of our people are dying. They ain't making 55, having heart attacks, diabetes, dying. For Why is that? When are we going to take this a little more seriously? I'm going to do one for the men eventually. I don't even know if it's my place to do one for the men, but it's my place to do one for the women. I know that. Anyway, I hope I got everything out the way. Um, I talked about the traveling, the raw full intensive, $97. It's on my website at www.theblackberrybeauty.com. If you're in need of a one-on-one -on -one consultation, that's also on the website. And you know I sell natural raw products. Thank you for all my loyal customers that, that always buy my products over and over again. I love them too, so I'm glad that you do. I really am. Anyway, um, 
Yeah, I want to do another video on this dry fasting and, and, and yeah, I'm a little more in why I'm doing it. I don't think I knew in the beginning why I was doing it. Like the ultimate sacrifice. I sacrificed my booty. I ain't got one no more, y'all. This is, this is non-existent. <laughs> and I don't care. It's all good. I want to get to the deeper truths. I really, really do. And when I find them, I want to give it to you. And it's just that simple. I'm so glad for YouTube. I'm so thankful for this platform. I'm so thankful for everybody that comments, everybody that watches. I'm so thankful to you. I read your comments. I smile with delight. And the sister R. Harris, I think you're a sister, you, you mentioned twice, and I'm going to check them out, Shades of Africa in the, in the Long Beach area in California. I'm going to check them out. I, the next time I go, I will be doing some filming from there for sure. I promise you that, and I want to thank you for that. So many people leave me comments and tips, and, and uh, I, yeah, I just want to make tell you that I'm reading them, and I'm going to do my best in videos to acknowledge your comments. Oh, I love y'all. Y'all don't even really know. Y'all don't even really know. Y'all think I'm doing so much for you all, but you do so much for me just by watching and commenting. And I love you with all my heart, sisters. This is Nubia I, the raw food goddess, the womb priestess, and the holistic practitioner. And I'm sending you an abundance of love for ourselves. Peace and blessings.